Hey guys, so today I'm excited to introduce a new open source intelligence tool for you and we're going to be talking about the harvester. If you've been following my blog, it's public and free to follow. You can just follow over at bmc.link slash politictech or buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. Both take you to the same place. You don't need to register to read the posts and you can follow for free over there. And if you want to support this kind of work, you can always buy me a coffee or join the monthly membership. But really, what helps the most is just resharing these videos and written tutorials and news stories. Big help, so I appreciate that. And I also want to know, do you want to see more open source intelligence type of stuff? I would love to do that because I feel it goes really well with privacy because it really is the other side of privacy where you learn how information is gathered on yourself and how others might do so. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today with the harvester. So over here at the Kali Linux page, it also has tool documentation there, but I'm going to take you through a real world example. The other day we did this video on September 14th talking about malicious emails and how to deal with potentially malicious files and potentially malicious emails. And even after that, we continued on in the same vein of potentially malicious emails and we covered the I2P mail setup, but we also covered settings for your maximizing email safety inside Thunderbird. So make sure to take a look at that. Even if you didn't follow the I2P mail video, this one is going to show you how to ensure you maximize safety inside Thunderbird. Even with I2P mail, you need to be concerned about some settings. And if you're using Onion Mail as well, take a look at that video. Highly recommend it. But let's get into the video. Let's go ahead and start talking about what the harvester is and what it can do for you. So we can take a look over at the GitHub. So to get the harvester, that's the first step. You're going to need it and you're going to need Python for this tool. Now you can also get it very easily by using something like Kali Linux, Parrot Linux, or Black Arch Linux, which is one I like in particular because I do enjoy Arch based Linux right now. Uh, so I have the harvester. Uh, you can actually install it in Black Arch using the yay command and just simply running yay capital S flag and then the harvester should get you good to go. Once you have the harvester, let's go ahead and open it up in a terminal since it is a command line based tool. You can either enter the harvester or lowercase h. Depending on your system and installation, I'm going to go ahead with the lowercase h, but on some systems you may need to capitalize that h. So it's something to keep in mind. First thing you'll want to do is run the h flag and what that is, is it's going to give you help. So it'll tell you some of the example commands that you can use and we'll go ahead and see that first. So the usage will be the harvester, then what you're going to do is the d flag for domain and then you'll enter the domain you want to look up. So what this tool does is it actually gathers all kinds of information. So if someone were targeting you to violate your privacy or anonymity online, they may use a tool like the Harvester to use to gather the information needed, the email addresses in particular, to run a spear phishing attack on you. And I covered spear phishing and those kinds of malicious emails back in uh, September. And then we went into further enhancing our Thunderbird settings to ensure that this kind of thing doesn't happen to you in those circumstances, but even more so in the disposable virtual machine for cubes, which I recommend using the Hunix disposable virtual machine for malicious emails, because there's all kinds of ways malicious emails can target you. But the first step in any malicious actor is going to be gathering your email address in order to specifically look at you but companies also need to be concerned about this because it is in fact the most common way that corporations are breached is through spear phishing attacks what that does is it's someone crafting an email to get your attention say an important financial email or something else they may have gathered through open source intelligence which is using publicly available information to 
use that information and then take it to target an individual or a company or someone who works at that company who has the kind of access they're after. And so we'll use the example command here and we'll run the harvester H again. We'll go ahead and run through it. So we're going to go with a basic command to show you and we'll do the harvester domain. We'll use Kali.org for our example as I don't think they would mind this and then we're going to set a limit. So we'll go with limit of 500 for the results. You don't have to set a limit but it can save you scrolling through a lot of stuff. Now you may also want to consider using proxies and that's completely up to you. I'm not going to bother with proxies but if you do want to set up proxies what you'll want to do is go over into the etc slash the capital H harvester command and then once you're in there you can see I listed the files and inside these you're gonna see proxies and they give you an example here for the formatting and so if you wanna add a proxy you can do that now if you do add a proxy to the proxies.yaml file uh, after you do that you're gonna want to use the p flag lowercase I'm not gonna go through that right now uh, as I don't think it's necessary since this is simply an example uh, you can also set a DNS server here so if you want to use a different DNS server to make your lookups you could set it to whatever DNS server that you want to use and one that you may trust more than your default DNS server and just consider that DNS lookups are in the clear whoever's DNS as long as well as your ISP can see DNS standard lookups in the clear. Now there are other solutions out there as I've talked about with things like DNS over TLS and others where some of that can be encrypted for you and that can help make DNS lookups more private and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get started with this now. So we're gonna do a basic lookup and with the source you have several options here now some of these options are going to require an API key we're not going to go through that because I don't think most people watching this video are going to have the API key ready but they are free to look into that and gather an API key that they can use for extra sources but we're going to go ahead and just use the defaults so we're actually going to use all sources so we're going to do B all and what that's going to do is it's just going to use all the sources and when we press the enter key it's going to end up looking up and finding all the information it can on this domain so if say you you have a small business and you're concerned it could be targeted you may want to run the harvester against your own domain see what kinds of email addresses are out there for the public and ensure that you know about this so if those email addresses are accessible by the harvester well then it is in all likelihood that someone else is going to find the same information so go ahead and run this against your own domain if you have one uh, or run it against a another domain um, just take a look at the results and we're going to see what we get here <laughs> it looks like we have our results now so let's go ahead and take a look through our results we've also limited our results with the L flag so you may decide to do that or you may wish not to limit those results it goes through and searches through all of this publicly available information for you and automates the entire process and so what we see is we have several different interesting URLs here and as we go through here we have several IP addresses associated with that domain and so if an attacker was looking to find a way into a network they may want to take a look at some of those IP addresses of course ethical pen testers in mind here 
Then you go down here, we can see several different hosts that were also found here. Now, it did say no emails were found. And a lot of times it will reveal many different email addresses, all depending what you're looking up. So we're going to go ahead and try a university next, just because many universities have email addresses that are easily scraped off these publicly available open source intelligence databases. So we can take a look at the domains and see several domains associated with our target here. Let's go ahead and run it once again, but this time let's go ahead and try something different. Let's go ahead with something like UCLA and we're just going to see what kind of results we get from this domain. Since you're going to be waiting a while, you might as well sit back, relax, and let the harvester do the work for you. We can also take note that there are several subdomains here that we can see in this long list that happen to be attached to that particular domain that we were searching of. This tool could be a great option if you run a business. You may want to find out what's out there, what's available to others, what kind of email addresses might be targeted by the results from the harvester. We're even noticing not only individuals subdomains we're also noticing there's a dns server a couple dns servers here access to a vast supply of information now what we see here is not only ip addresses that have been found for us we're also noticing all of these interesting links that it's also found for us and in addition to that it didn't find any linked ins you may want to try other sources if that's something that interests you but it did find 69 different email addresses. And so if this were your company or your workplace, you may want to know that all of these email addresses are publicly available and a malicious attacker could target one or all of these individuals to attempt to gain further access into your network. Take a look at my earlier video on email safety and also take a look at the one from early September where I talked about email safety and how you can take advantage of disposable Hunix virtual machines inside cubes to open emails more safely this way and you can also do it in a disposable fashion meaning with the Hunix disposable virtual machines that are found inside cubes that I covered in September you can open emails that you otherwise may be afraid to open but of course always be careful and know what you're doing before you do it make sure that you're doing your due diligence on this stuff and as you can see we've gathered quite a bit of information and in fact if you were looking to contact a company for good reasons say you need help with something it is a product maybe this could be a tool that could be useful to find ways to contact a company for the right reasons and not malicious purposes. But for those who are on red teams, this is a great tool that can help you gather information on networks and also companies as well. So this is a video that is meant to be an educational video on the harvester and how information can be harvested on us very easily and to be cautious online with what we do and how we open our emails and you can find the harvester over at github at laramies slash the harvester it's a great tool i'll leave more screenshots in the public blog post and make sure to follow over at Faustodon, which is a Mastodon account I have. Check out Faustodon.org at RTP to follow over there. And also you can follow me over at Twitter at 
twitter.com slash TV privacy. And uh, you can also follow over at the public blog. So make sure to follow the public blog over there. And uh, I look forward to hearing your comments. What do you like about OSINT? Would you like to see more of this kind of content? Would you like to see more examples of using these kinds of tools? I would love to know your thoughts below and help to determine future video directions. See, without feedback, I really don't know what you guys enjoy. So if I don't get comments, I assume that nobody watched the video. So make sure to leave a comment, share the video, like it, help the algorithm out. And I will be back with more on how to protect your privacy, security, and open source intelligence.